So this is, I'm officially starting now. Welcome back to Steps to Freedom. Thank you for tracking with me all these weeks and months. It's actually been since March that I've been recording these lessons. So tonight I'm doing part two of Satan's counterattack. So last week, uh, two weeks ago we met, we talked about Satan's counterattack happening in 48 hours. Did any of you experience a counterattack after our last class? Can you remember? She's, that was a little hand raised back there. Oh, this one here too. Okay. <laughs> um, just for conversation's sake, how did you got either some breakthrough or some deliverance and then Satan attacked you back? You attacked his kingdom and then he attacked you back. How did he do it? My dad kicked me out of his house. Terrific! Promotion! Homeless. <laughs> Homeless. All right, all right. Um, 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 I just... Because um, you did get some deliverance in the last week. Yeah, I honestly I feel like a, uh, I just feel like um, more uh, vocal, like... Um, like kind of trying to intimidate more intimidation. Yeah. Okay. Stuff like that. And like uh, more clearly uh, discernible that like he sounds different and almost like and almost like uh, at times trying to convince me that like I like he would feel bad and like if he left. Like, oh. You know, he trying to get you to have pity. Yeah, have pity. Mm hmm well, We don't want to keep any voices, people things in our lives out of pity, right? We never, that's not going to work with you. And your situation, I'm not, we've talked extensively about it, and I'm not celebrating the fact that she's now homeless, but I'm celebrating the fact that God is moving her, because that was an unhealthy situation, right? Right, and God, um, He never leaves us. He never uh, so he turns our, his back on us. So he sees your situation. Um, no worry. I'm just going to rejoice. <laughs> rejoice in all things. She said she worshiped the whole way here. So, and she's got quite a long drive. So that was cool. Yeah. I have something. So I wasn't here for the last class, mm -hmm. but I watched the last class. Thank you. That's why we're recording again. <laughs> and during that time, I had an attack with my shoulder. Like, uh, I felt my muscle on my shoulder. I couldn't do nothing all day because it oh, was wow. being, I was being attacked. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was doing self-deliverance on myself. And then I know that I um, I reached out to a friend, and then over the phone, me and her just started doing deliverance over over the nice. phone, and a lot came out. And then the next day, that spirit wanted to come back on me so I would just say no you don't belong here I evict you in the name of Jesus yeah it was gone but it was a fight because it kept wanting to come back good yeah well that's good you know Satan uses right I said he's going to use um, our loved ones to cause problems he's going to use our mind he's going to use our body symptoms in our body absolutely and we have to fight back we have to be um Number one, we're going to go through all seven again. Um, I went through part of seven, but just as a recap, we know that attacks come within 48 hours of a breakthrough, after deliverance, after a healing, right? Satan's going to try to come back. And so how do we counter that attack of Satan? We, we like fought, he fights, and now we're fighting back again. Um, we have to speak out loud. And so if you were doing that, speaking out loud, no, you're not going to. I'm not saying don't do that in the grocery store, right? Okay, no, don't do it in public. <laughs> um, hopefully you live with people that know you already and they know what's going on. But you have to, and you don't have to be loud about it, but you have to be stern and you have to be, hey, welcome. You have to be um, serious, right? Oh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, you have to be like, I rebuke you. You have to rebuke them sharply. No, I'm not accepting that. I'm not accepting that negative thought. I'm not accepting that lie. No, I'm not having self-pity on you. No. Oh, now you're homeless. So what are you going to do? What, you know, all these different thoughts that come in. 
you should have did this differently. You and the major dad mad. You should have, right? You should have stayed and, uh-huh. So all these things. But if we are walking with the Lord, guess what? He orders our steps. Man plans this way because we don't know everything, right? We plan it and God then orders our steps. He leads us in paths of righteousness. So if that's true, and you're seeking after the Lord and not just your own pleasure and comfort, but you're really seeking God and His ways, then you must be exactly where He has destined for you to be in this moment. Yeah? It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I believe that. Yeah. So we, if we really believe God's Word, then where you are right now, regardless of how bleak it may feel, or appear, or depressing, we keep pressing forward because he's leading you. He's leading us. All right, so we have to, Satan's seven ways to counter Satan's attack, all right? These are to ward off the attacks and retain your blessing. So you get a blessing, you get a victory, you get a healing, and now you need to fight back because he's going to come. They try to get back in. These spirits try to get back in to your body. Uh, so that was number one. Number two is to speak in tongues on and off the day. Now I'm going to stop right here and announce, and I don't know, there's a few of you here. So the last thir Tuesday of this month, which I think is the 26th, if someone could check that for me, 27th maybe? I think it's the 27th, December 27th. And I'm going to send an email blast out. Um, we're gonna I'm going to do class. And it's going to be on various tongues. It's going to be on speaking in tongues, singing in tongues, and warring in tongues. Okay, and God willing, uh, we'll have a special guest. So that'll be nice. Um, so speaking in tongues on and off throughout the day, including singing in tongues, helps fight back, fight that counterattack that Satan's coming after you with. Especially in your mind, you're having, starting to have negative thoughts, you start speaking in tongues, you get into the spirit. We, we can, the enemy always wants you to get into the flesh of like doing it in your own strength, right? So if you then respond with, nope, I'm going to just, I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm going to just, you know, go into that, that language by faith, then your mind isn't railing with all these negative thoughts and what ifs and I could have and I should have and all of those, right? Or being bombarded or beat up by negativity. So you want to do this all throughout the day. All right. Remember, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but directly to God. And it's the perfect prayer. So you're being attacked. You want to ask for help. You want to cry out to help. For help, why not speak in tongues? That's the perfect cry for help. And the enemy hates it because it can't understand you. All right. I want to remind everybody of number three. It says you must finish your deliverance. Okay, and I have some thoughts about what does that mean? You know, I heard Brother Mike talk about it a couple weeks ago. He used the word finish your deliverance and he said finish your healing. And so could we not say that finishing deliverance means being healed emotionally, mentally, physically? I think that's until the day of Christ Jesus, actually. <laughs> I think we're going to be in this process. But getting to a place where you're like, wow, you know, I don't have nightmares anymore. Wow, I don't um, have these bombarding negative thoughts. I don't have racing thoughts anymore. I'm, my way is prospering. God has opened my way. I have a job. I'm, I have good relationships with people. God's moved me, gave me opportunity to help other people. You know, these different things that show growth. The Lord wants to prosper us in all things, not just in our health and in our soul, our emotions and our, our mind thinking, but also, 
you know, in our lives. So we have a home. So we have transportation. So we have a job where we can express ourselves and, and, and feel good making money and providing for ourselves. And then it says, make sure that you, you know, work so, and make money and so you can give a little bit to somebody else. That feels good, it always feels good to me. So, um, so yeah, that was number three. Number four, I think is where we left off. Uh, it says, number four, you cannot let the spirits back into your body or it could get worse. Worse than where you first started. Luke 11, 24 through 26 says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it goes through, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, the spirit that went out of the man says to himself, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it, the house he left, clean and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. The last state of the man is worse than the first. This is Jesus speaking, talking about deliverance. When an evil spirit leaves a person, that spirit leaves and it roams around looking for another host, house to dwell in. And when it doesn't find one that it wants, that it likes in the family, <laughs> it comes back to the one it left. And they see it swept clean. What does that mean, swept clean, put in order? Well, it means that person got deliverance, but they didn't fill the house with what? God's word, with um, the things of God, with moral living, with purity. It, that person, a lot of times I meet people, they come for deliverance and they get a measure of deliverance and they never come back. And then we see them a few months later and they're sicker than they were. Sometimes people just want deliverance to feel better, not so they can have a closer relationship with the Lord. And that's always sad because I know they're going to get reinfected. Yeah. So when that unclean spirit goes out of the man, he wants to come back. And you cannot let the spirits back in your body. You can't go back to sin. 2 Peter 2.21 says, For it would have been better for them, who? The person who got deliverance. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than have known, having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. I remember when I was young in Christianity, young in my faith, I was discovering new things. And I would say, I wish I stayed ignorant. I wish I didn't know that there was um, backstabbing in the church. <laughs> I wish I didn't know what happened at higher level ministry positions. It, it broke my heart. <clears throat> things you don't know kind of save you. They save you a bit. Once you enter deliverance, there's no going back. Because if you do go back to your old life, and your old habits and your old addictions and all of that, you're going to become worse. And these spirits, they don't just make the person a little bit more sick. The Bible says seven times more wicked, seven times more wicked than and so the state of the man ends up being much, much worse. Um, I, I, can, I can say from experience, things that you never even thought you were capable of doing, you now are capable of doing them. Because the spirits come into you and give you the thoughts and the, the urges and the desires, and then they bring the situations and people in your path to now do that sin. Yep. There's a lot of wickedness out there. A lot. And um, 
Yes, in Ecclesiastes, King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. However, there's a lot of new stuff to me. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about. I don't, I maybe heard about. There's a lot of stuff I never even heard about. Wickedness I never even known about. And in the last year, I've learned about so much more through this counseling practice and through deliverance. And it grieves me. It grieves me to know what people have been through. And these are all, this is all the work of the enemy, all the work of the devil, which Jesus came to destroy, right? Matthew chapter 12, 43 through 45 says this, and it's just, a, it's the same scripture, but it go, it's a little different. It's in Matthew instead of Luke. When an unclean spirit goes out of the man, again, Jesus is speaking about deliverance. He goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he says, the spirit says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Uh, then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. They enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. So he tells a story, a parable, an example, and then he brings it into reality. So it shall be with this wicked generation. He's pointing actually to the Pharisees and scribes, the people of the law. Um, remember, you're dealing with a person without a body. Think about the people that you know, the very smart, witty, cunning, creative people you know. These spirits are far more advanced than they. And they get in and they try to manipulate, what they do is they manipulate us humans to do their will. And that's why we have to pray, not my will be done, but thy will be done. We're easily deceived because they sound just like us. It feels like you're like, these are my feelings. Well, they can't be trusted because there are spirits influencing. Number five, understand and believe that the Lord will see you through and you will be totally healed and delivered. You will be. If you do not grow weary in doing good, in due season, you shall reap a harvest. A harvest of what? Peace. A harvest of joy. A harvest of freedom. Psalms 91, it's kind of long. I'll, I'll read just a little bit of it. But it says, Psalms 91, 3 through 13. Surely, in our language today, for sure, <laughs> He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous, perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield. Where's that shield? It's not here or here. It's not that kind of shield. His truth shall be your shield. Where is his truth? In your mind. What you believe is so important. Because if you don't believe it here, even if your heart is telling you something, alerting you. If you don't believe it here, you won't do it. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night because his truth is your shield. And he says, I am your protector. He said, I am the, I'm your light. He's so it says, um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. That is the truth. And that's how we cannot be afraid at night when terror is all around us. 
because we reflect on his truth. Because sometimes we're in a situation where it is terrorizing. Have you ever heard gunshots at night? I have. I remember I bought a house. It was a second home I bought. And I just had moved in. I had no furniture. And I did have a bed. That was all I had, I remember. I just had a bed. No other furniture. And I heard a bunch of gunshots rattle off. And I went and hid in my closet that was um, kind of deep in the home. I was like, the bathroom of the closet, the bathroom's got a window, I'm going into the closet. <laughs> and I remember shaking on the phone with 911, you know, we just heard gunshots. Well, I learned later that I had moved into the second most dangerous neighborhood in all of Phoenix. Because I wanted to do ministry. <laughs> yeah. So there was terror around me, right? And, and sometimes there's terror around you. Maybe it's the people in your family that are causing the terror. But we don't have to be afraid because his truth is our shield. We don't have to be afraid. Nor the arrow that flies by day. Oh, my goodness. So many arrows flying by day. Again, we have to remember God's word. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I love uh, that scripture that says, he's my strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Not the wicked run into it, the righteous. So who else is in the strong tower? More righteous people. <laughs> the righteous run into it and they are safe. So nor, no, verse 6, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I'm sure most of you know the next part. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near your dwelling place. But wait a minute. It has come near my dwelling place, and I, I do have all these problems and all of this. Go back to what do you believe? <laughs> what do you believe? <laughs> he works all things out together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And if he's called you, he has a purpose for your life. And if you're a born-again Christian, guess what? You were called first because no one got to God by initiating that themselves. Right? He had to draw us. So I encourage you to read the rest of that scripture. The next one is Psalms 94, 22. But the Lord has been my defense and my God, the rock of my refuge. So when you're feeling down, like, oh my gosh, this process of deliverance is taking so long. This is taking too long. Why is it taking so long? Am I doing something wrong? Is, is God still listening? Am I, am, am I ever going to be healed? It can be very arduous. And so you have to remind yourself, but the Lord has been my defense in the past. And guess what? He's going to be my defense in the future. He's always with me. He's my rock. He's my refuge. Psalms 37, 5 through 3. I don't remember what scripture this one is, which I'm going to say before, but it talks about the heart is uh, deceptive. Our heart deceives us, and it can't be trusted. Because the thing about our heart is like our emotions. One minute you're happy, the next minute you're crying. You can't trust that. Right? It, it can deceive us, so we can't trust it. It's not reliable. But guess what? Psalms 37 says, trust in the Lord and do good. You trust in the Lord and do what's right. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Faithfulness. He is faithful. Keep reminding yourself Oh, he was faithful here when uh, me and my family, we needed food. Groceries just showed up. I was, I was, um, I had to pay out this bill. I didn't even know about it. And then, and then some money just showed up. Wow. Um, you know, I'm sure I could ask you, how was the Lord faithful to you in the past? 
I know every single one of you could say, I can remember at least one time. Well, that's enough to tell the devil, shut up. The Lord is faithful to me. He's not going to give up on me. He's not a man so that he can, so that he lies. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm never going to reject you. I'm not going to quit on you. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Your heart is to be healed. Your heart is to be whole. Your heart is to serve him, to love him, to understand his love. Your desire is to have good relationships. Your desire is to have enough, right? A little extra so you can share with others. That's your desire. Those are godly desires. He gave them to you. Um, now, now, I don't know if, about the desire for a Porsche. I can't say. <laughs> or it's just you and you desire a five-bedroom house. I, I don't know. You know, some families need a five-bedroom house. <laughs> right? But you know what I'm saying? And you have to think about that. He gives us the desires of our heart. Um, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. That right there, verse 5, speaks patience. you got to be patient, right? You have to be patient. Commit your way to the Lord. Okay, Lord, this is what I want to do. This is my plan. You direct my steps. And if my plan is not according to your will, then you're going to direct me right? I'm going to trust you and you'll bring it to pass. You want me healed. You want me delivered. You want me in safety. You want me to have a home. You want me to have friends. You want me to prosper and be in good health. He'll bring it to pass. Two more Psalms, write them down. Psalms 24 is all about the King of glory. It's long, but it's beautiful. And Psalms 25 is about our deliverer. So when you're thinking about, wow, this process is taking a long time, and, and you want to encourage yourself in number five, which says, understand and believe that the Lord will see you through. He will do it. And you will be healed. You will be delivered. A couple more scriptures. Uh, Hebrews 13.5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Proverbs 5, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Number six. Number six is on the seven ways to counter Satan's attack. Number six is stop saying negative things. Stop repeating lies. I'll be honest with you. It takes a little while to get into a new habit. The world, the secular world says 21 days to create a new habit. It's three weeks. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Deceit means to wish harm on another. When you say a negative thing, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when you say a negative thing, it can be a prophetic word of negativity, especially when you're speaking about yourself or about somebody else. It's 
So you have to stop doing that. Ephesians, okay, so that was Proverbs 34, 13. Did I say that? I'm sorry. Proverbs 34, 13, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. I'm so blessed I have such good students taking notes. <laughs> Ephesians 4.31 Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, that's like arguing, complaining, right? And evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Okay, I made a mistake. So deceit doesn't mean that. Malice means when you have, you want something negative to happen to the, somebody else. I messed it up. Deceit and malice. Malice is wishing harm upon somebody else. I guess, like, kind of like revenge. But I think malice is different in the way that you want negative, something negative to happen to somebody else. Uh, for pleasure. Makes me think of those home videos when people are getting hurt and they were comical. I hated those things always. I thought, this is terrible. We're laughing because someone just hurt themselves. They fell on the ice and hurt themselves. I thought that was terrible. Anyway, um, so Ephesians 4.31, um, bitterness, you know, we get hurt, you get angry, you, you need to forgive the person, and when you don't, it becomes unforgiveness, and that unforgiveness turns to resentment, and then it will turn into bitterness. The root cause of cancer is bitterness. You can track it. Your mom hurt you. You got angry. You got hurt. You got angry. And, and then, you know, you have to make a decision. Am I going to hold on to that anger or am I going to forgive? And if you go the way of forgiveness, well, you're released. If you don't, it turns to unforgiveness. And then you build up a resentment. And over time, it turns to bitterness. I always think about that elderly person who's got the yard and, you know, children's, the, the ball bounces into the yard and they come out like, get your ball out of my yard. You know, they're bitter old, wrinkled, uh, yuck person, right? Like every little thing bothers them. You know somebody like that? Uh-oh. <laughs> every little thing bothers them. They're offended, just like that. That's bitterness. It takes a while for a person to get to bitterness. So, like, so that's why I gave you the list of all those things. Titus 3, 2. To speak evil of no one. Be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. It's hard. It's hard. We're, we have a culture of where we talk about people. We have magazines dedicated to gossip. We have TV shows dedicated to gossip and speaking evil and finding out. What is it called? TMZ, I think. TMZ is a show where they're going to show you this celebrity and that celebrity and what they're doing in their lives that's good or usually what's wrong, what's bad, what's, you know, shocking. Um, we're to speak evil of no one. And it's hard. We're tempted when they're doing bad things, when they are doing evil. We're tempted to speak evil of them. But really, it's not them doing it, is it? Mm -mm. Let's say Christians. If you're a Christian, you're born again. Let's say you're a born again Christian. I'll state it like that. Your spirit, we're all spirit beings. That's who we really are. And your spirit is born again. It's made new. You never want to hurt anybody. That's not you wanting to do it. That's not you wanting to get revenge. Our heart gets deceived. Our heart deceives us. Our mind tricks us. 
but your spirit never does. I just want to say that. 1 Peter 3.10 says, He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Speaking deceit, deception. You must fight the good fight of faith. You got to keep going. And number seven, the last thing you can do to come against Satan's counterattack is never but live by your emotions or feelings. They will give you, your, your emotions or your feelings will give you false impressions and lead you into discouragement. You know it's happened multiple times. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. Sight. We walk by faith and not by feelings. I used to think that if I felt something that was God, I was tricked. Well, I don't feel good. I don't feel like doing it. Well, we don't walk by feelings, right? I don't let my feelings tell me what I should and shouldn't do. I have to walk by faith. I don't let my feelings tell me, um, or it's my goal anyway, my feelings to tell me what's, what, what's right and what's wrong. We live in a society today where feelings are dictating people's decisions and really big decisions. Yeah. Um, sister and I were talking about it at dinner and talking about how so many people are making decisions about themselves, who they are, man, woman, and it's all based on their feelings. And where is that going to lead us? What, what's going to happen to an entire generation of people that are making these really permanent decisions for themselves based on feelings? based on their heart, which deceives them. Scary. So never live by emotions or feelings. Proverbs 3, 4, and 5 says, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. We should um, want to have a good reputation. First with God, then with man. We can't always please man. Um, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Psalms 37, 1 through 8. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as, green, as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him also and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because in the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. That word fret, do not worry. Do not worry. It only causes harm. What is the root? What illness is caused by worry, sister? Anxiety. Nobody wakes up one day without worrying first and has anxiety. 
first there's there's fear, there's worry, there's uncertainty, and the dwelling on it. And then, then one day you wake up and, and your heart is pounding and you're like, I don't know why my heart is pounding. I don't have any thoughts. I feel nervous all the time. Yeah, because you just sowed a whole year's worth crop of worry. Think about an, an open field and every time you worry about something, you put a seed in the ground. Oh, my kids, seed in the ground. Oh, where are we going to live? Another seed in the ground. How are we going to eat? Another seed in the ground. What am I going to do with my life? Another seed in the ground. Wh what's going to become of me next year? Another seed in the ground. Is God happy with me? Another seed in the ground. Oh my gosh, another seed in the ground. And guess what? Over time, you reap a harvest of what? Anxiety, panic, disorder. <laughs> then you get a diagnosis and they want to give you medication. Okay? If you do that and you water it and you feed it and you fertilize all those seeds, that's what you get. Do not fret, it only causes harm. When you rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him, when you delight yourself in the Lord and you trust in Him, and you fret not, you worry not, and you're not envious of other people that are doing better than you, then you'll be victorious. You have to catch your thoughts. Every church should be preaching this. This is the found, this is like the found, so foundational. To renew the mind, it's impossible to renew the mind without catching your thoughts. As a, as a new Christian and beyond, right? 1 John 5, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Faith. Faith in ourselves? No. Faith in God. Faith in God and His ability and His desire He wants to. Faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Faith in His Word. Faith. Our faith in God. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us victory. He gives us victory. Do you know your father is like that very zealous parent on the sidelines at a soccer game, jumping up and down, cheering as you run to get that ball down the field and into the goal, yelling and screaming and cheering. That's our Father in heaven. At minimum, right? He's not only doing that, He's commanding like angels and, and such to help us. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So thank Him. Finish your spiritual warfare training. Keep going, keep learning. Last scripture I want to give to you is Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brethren, Paul said, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press. You press through crowds of people to get to the bathroom, ladies, right? <laughs> Remember when you used to go to concerts 
and you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. Everybody needs to move out of my way. I got to press through this thing. Or you're at the concert and you want to get, you know, it's like open seating and you're running to get to the front. Or is that just me? Okay, I was a big concert goer back in the day. But I would fight. I'd be like moving people out of the way. I was pressing through the crowd. We have to press through towards the goal. What's the goal? Why did Jesus come? In uh, 1 John it says to destroy the works of the devil. So as you fight through your healing and deliverance, as you destroy the works of the devil in your life, you are reaching the goal. You have to keep pressing for it. It's work. It's sweaty. It's smelly. It's, it's hard. It's a lot of effort. It takes time. It's not a one and done. I had someone last week who sat in the chair across from me. She's like, so this isn't a one and done, huh? God, no, it's not. <laughs> um, God wants you to become a spiritual warrior. He wants you to overcome to the end. Um, don't give up. Father God is calling you. The Holy Spirit is with you. You have all the tools that you need to keep pressing on. And thankfully, those of you in the room, we have each other too. And those of you online, thank you for reaching out. Um, I'm humbled every time I get an email from somebody in some other state or country even saying they appreciate these little teachings. Um, so thank you. So that's the seven uh, ways to counter Satan's attack after you've gotten some victory. So um, my email, and this is for our YouTubers, is steps to freedom adc at gmail.com if you have any questions. If you would like a list of these seven counterattacks, email me, I'll send it to you. Okay, all the scriptures that I read out and everything, I'd be happy to. Um, December 27th, we're going to be back here. It'll be the last meeting of the year, and we're going to do various tongues. If you do not have your gift of tongues and you're in Phoenix, come 630. You will leave with your gift of tongues, I promise. We'll make that happen. Um, and those of you who just want to practice or be in the presence of God, because he always joins us here, Come 6.30, 6.30 to 8.30. And then January 10th, I start new class, Steps to Freedom. Going through the miracle list, we'll be starting with step one. And that's January 10th, 2023, uh, starting at 6.30 on Tuesdays. Thank you. <laughs>